Are you thinking about buying the Artillery Sidewinder X1? Check out this video. I go through a whole bunch of stuff in it and you can make your own decision. Let me start off by saying I am new to 3D printing. I've been doing it for a couple months now. I am a CNC machinist. I've been a machinist for over 20 years. So when it comes to G-code and stuff like that, I'm pretty good with it. Um, and these are my opinions on this machine. I've done a whole bunch of research. I've been looking for a machine that is cost-effective but still has a large footprint. It was between the Artillery X1, uh, CR-10 Pro, CR-10 V2, and uh, TiVo Tornado. With everything I've seen on YouTube, and also me running the machine personally, I feel I made the right choice. So much so, not only do I have one of them, here's the other one that has over 500 hours on it so far. So, here we go. Take a second. If you guys want to help the channel out, we now have t-shirts, Erickson Machine and Performance t-shirts. So feel free to hit us up on Facebook or email us. Happy to help you guys out with that. We also got stickers. Any help is appreciative. So here we go. Let's get started. So this is what I was basically looking for in a machine. I was looking for a machine that had a large footprint. Um, well, large build area. So 300 by 300. The Z, as long as it was, it was 300, I was okay with this. This is 300 by 300 by 400. Perfect. Considering I'm a very mechanical person, but I don't know or I didn't know 3D printing, I'm still learning. I wanted a machine that I didn't have to modify. I wanted something that, for the most part, out of the box, it was gonna work. So, as I said before, the machines I was looking at was the Artillery X1, the TiVo Tornado, the Creality CR10 V2 or CR10 S Pro, and I ended up picking this. All the reviews on YouTube, Makers Muse, Teaching Tech, um, 3D Printing Nerd, you know, all the big guys in 3D printing really, really like this printer. So I decided that's what I was going to go with. So I have the printer that's running right now. That's got over 500 hours on it. I've had zero issues with that machine. The only thing on that machine that I have changed is I changed the co cooling fan. So I changed to a 50-20 cooling fan with a different fan shroud. Other than that, everything is stock. I modified, well, I modified the spool holder, which I'll show you, but it's still the stock spool holder. Um, and I'm getting ready to do some other things to it. Some of the videos that are going to be coming up on these two machines are going to be comparing the two. Modified, unmodified. I'm also going to be doing a video with all the different cooling fans. So we have the 5015, which is this with this shroud we have the stock 4020 so we have this one there's also this one to test so and then there's the 5020 which is what I'm running on the other machine so one of the next videos will be showing you the three different ones 
and seeing which one performs better so you guys can make a decision on that. As I said, other than that, this thing's worked flawlessly. I, I had one hiccup um, at around 250 hours. The nozzle started leaking a little bit, um, which I just tightened it up and it's been going since. Um, when I tightened it up, I switched that to a micro Swiss nozzle. Um, I now have a whole bunch of other nozzles that I'm going to be doing a video uh, with E3D hardened nozzles, uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.0. So the nice thing with a volcano heater block that these things come with, you can push a whole bunch of filament through it. And on a printer this large, with some of the stuff I want to do, I want to be able to use a much larger nozzle so we can print it quicker. So this machine, bone stock, just came. I've printed two things on it. This machine, I left the stock fan shroud. These are the first two prints on it. So the cube that artillery gives on their SD card or their USB stick comes out awesome. It's printed at over 100 millimeters a second. Comes out flawless. I then, my son wanted me to print a Pikachu for him. So I printed this Pikachu. This was printed uh, with 5% infill and 75 millimeters a second. The only thing you can see, it came out beautiful, but on the tail, this was printed without supports. You can see a couple of the areas that the fan didn't cool properly. So it ended up a little funky but for a completely bone stock machine running at 75 millimeters a second right out of the box with zero adjustments you really can't beat it in my opinion for the price tag of this machine which is you know 400 bucks which that was the big thing it was really between this and the CR10S Pro but everything I was hearing about that machine was you had to do a whole bunch of upgrades just for it to work properly. Um, this coming with a Titan style direct drive extruder. I'd like to be able to print flexibles with it. Um, so it was a huge selling point. So as I said, the original machine, I've got about 500 hours printing on it to work flawlessly. I recently put a wham bam flexible build plate on it which has amazed me how well it works. It's basically a magnetic sheet that goes down. This sticks to that, and then when you're done printing, you just peel it up and flex it, and your parts come off. No scraping with a spatula or anything like that. All right, so let's check this out. This is the Wham Bam Flex Plate System five mass and you can see how easy everything pops pretty awesome right so um some of the prints I've done, I did the CHEP cube to check it out, measure it. It ended up being 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter by 19.98 millimeter, which is close enough for what I'm looking to do. Built the gear heart and the gear cube, the Emmett design. These things are just a blast to fiddle with. Here's the cube. So then went to PETG. So these are supports printed for the printer. 
printed some more toys for my son and daughter. Printed two benchies. So this is with PLA, glow in the dark PLA. It really, really came out great. And then this is with clear PTG. Also came out great, a, a little bit of stringing, but considering the material, um, I don't think you can argue that the thing came out flawless. So the next video on these machines I'm going to be showing you are going to be testing the cooling fans and then putting it to the test. Other thing I noticed with this, which has surprised me in a whole bunch of the other videos I've seen on these machines, with these larger machines, and I know this from my day job, which is running a CNC machine shop, the bigger the machine, the more weight is in motion. So if you have a bed that's this size, that's moving around 75 to 100 millimeters a second, if your table isn't strong enough, you're going to hurt your print quality, not because of the printer, but because you're getting a vibration through the table. So when I knew I was going with these printers, I went and bought a butcher block table with steel legs. This thing's over 200 pounds, this table. The single machine running full speed actually makes the table move which I'm going to end up reinforcing it. But I've seen a whole bunch of people say that they've had issues with their prints and a lot of it actually looks like it's not that, it's an issue with the table that they have their machine on where a couple guys I've talked to, they've put the machine on the floor and all of a sudden the problem's gone away. So if you're going to go with one of these machines, make sure that you have a sturdy enough table or you put it on the floor. You know, if you're running it slow, 40 millimeters a second, 50 millimeters a second, odds are you're not going to see it. But if you're going to start pushing it, pay attention to it. So, once again, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching, guys. As you can see, I printed a whole bunch. So, I mainly printed in PLA and PETG. So, here's a beautiful print. All this stuff was basically downloaded off Thingiverse. Skull is printed in Vaz mode. Cool cell phone mount. Emmett's gear heart. The gear cube. Here is what comes on the memory stick from the machine Chep Cube which just came out awesome it's printed in PTG so fan mounts so all these different fans, I'm going to be doing a whole video just comparing all the different fans. So, and we'll be using a 4020, a 5015, and a 1520 fan to compare them. USB holder, another cell phone mount, threads, C-clamp for the cell phone mount. We got, unfortunately my kids got to these and chewed on them. I have two little ones. The Nautilus gear. Little Pikachu. Some upgrades for the printer. And unfortunately the world we live in at the moment, masks that I'm getting ready to donate, and visors I'm getting ready to donate.